Now that it's 2025, I'm going to show you some of the web design trends that are emerging, as well as some which we're going to leave in the past. The first new web design trend is called anti-design. It's one that breaks all conventions by not really adhering to any specific rules. It's brought on board by a new generation of web designers that are trying to stand out and therefore creating their own new styles. Anti-design works really well for things like posters where it can stand out due to its unique nature. When attempted on websites, you can experiment in new and creative ways where you add motion to a static image or have an image so large that you can't ignore it. And when taken to the extreme, you end up with websites like this, which weren't possible in the past due to the complexity of coding something like this, but now you get no-code tools that allow you to pretty much create anything that's in your imagination. This can be both a good thing and a bad thing. The second web design trend is experimental navigation. This is because we're all used to and bored of the traditional nav bar that sits at the top of a website or even a hamburger menu. People are finding new and interesting ways to create navigation that is outside of the box. Let's take a look at a few. This website from Skycovia has one of the best navigation systems I've seen in my life. It is one that always keeps you on the same page because the navigation is done through this zoom in and zoom out effect. It makes it feel like this website is one giant canvas. What's more is that I don't have to just zoom in and out of different sections. I can actually just move about the different pages manually by panning left and right. Experimental navigation like this just makes me want to explore the website a lot more. This web design from the Canal Street Market is another example of navigation done right. You can immediately see the pages almost like folds that you can unfold as you click through and it never feels like you actually leave the website as you navigate to two different pages. The third design trend that is emerging more and more now is scrolling design. This is where you're adding a little bit of parallax or animation as part of a scroll event. And a lot of websites seem to be doing this with an animated sequence of text flying into a screen or images coming into display or even creative ways to use 3D elements. Here's one example I like from the big picture company. This web design has a little bit of 3D happening alongside the scroll event, which takes you through to this section here with 3D letters flying out. Then we get to the second part of the site, which does a horizontal scroll, having 3D letters come into place and move about as I'm navigating through. 2025 brings what I'm going to coin as macro animations. We've seen micro animations in the past, animations on small buttons or little interactions, but macro animations are ones that appear on the entire page. And they respond to things like your mouse movement as well as your scroll, where the entire website feels like it's both alive and reacting to anything that you're doing. And you'll often find websites like this combining everything from scroll jacking to mouse movement animation to 3D elements all the way throughout the entire site. Personally, I prefer a more subtle approach where not everything is moving on the page and it's maybe a little bit slower so that it's not overwhelming for me, but it still makes the page feel like there's additional content that's just out of reach. The fifth web design trend is called chatbot design. Because of the rise of AI, every website now is looking to add their own AI chatbot to their site. And while I don't think it's definitely necessary, I do see and recognize that this is an emerging design trend that's all over Dribbble. So what you'll start seeing is more and more user interfaces that incorporate AI elements such as voice or text or chat into their website designs. What I find interesting about this 2025 design aesthetic is that every website will be slightly different, having its own unique take on incorporating AI integration into its own services. Sometimes this could be in the form of a small floating bar that allows you to put in different prompts or complete different tasks or even have quick prompt actions where an AI can give you recommendations. Other times it could be just in the way that an app is designed where rather than just having a basic chat dialogue, you can have something a little bit more interesting. Number six are smart videos. These are pieces of media that replace traditional images in areas like feature sections. So rather than a user viewing an image of a feature, they get to see a small video of about 10 seconds of what that feature actually looks like. And I've gotten a chance to see some really good examples of this. They can sometimes be videos that play when you scroll into the frame. Other times they can be pages filled with videos that keep you watching. But personally, I think the best execution of smart videos are very subtle ones that don't actually start until you scroll 
scroll over them. And they're very relevant to the kind of things that you're looking at, such as this one from Huli, which has implemented it in a number of areas on their website. Number seven is cursor animation. In the past, we simply changed the image of the cursor, but now we're having cursor movement actually animate different parts of a website in creative ways. And I find this fascinating because it can bring to life websites in a way that hasn't been possible in the past, like this one here, which adds a little bit of oil painting to a website as you navigate through different types of scenes. Another example of this trend is having elements on the page that a cursor can interact with, move about and control, like this one here from the stripe.dev website where you have different windows here that you can drag and move about, as well as this table and checklist that feels like you're almost in a custom operating system, which you get to control and navigate through. While 2025 brings new web design trends, there are a few that haven't gone away, such as custom illustrations. This is when you mix a little bit of hand-drawn art together with a website, like this example from London Therapy, which uses a lot of custom illustrations and hand-drawn colored items to make the website feel very open, clear, and welcoming. Here's another example of custom illustrations, but with a little bit of animation, where they're using those illustrations around the edges of the page, or to even swap from one section of the page to another, or just to have overlaid over text or pictures that give it a little bit of a more artistic flair. And the benefit of something like this is that you get a little bit more of a human touch whenever you're viewing pages like this, rather than a lot of the lifeless AI generated content you see on the internet these days. Number nine is full screen headers or hero sections because first impressions matter. While full screen websites aren't anything new, they are the type that make you feel like you're not actually scrolling through the page, but the page is remaining on your screen the whole time and you're just getting to see how elements interact on it. Since websites have a lot of content these days, full screen websites often might have things like sliders so that you can see multiple bits of the website in one go rather than scrolling up or down. Another good execution of this is just using a full screen video. This one really did well because of the saturated colors that made the text stand out quite well. Another example of this is by Off Menu here, where they've created a site that lets you always stay on the main full screen section while scrolling through different types of elements or case studies that they've created on the right side here. Then you can click through and preview some of the artwork from that case study, all without ever leaving the main site. The 10th web design trend for 2025 is a Bento Grid or Bento UI because it's worked in the past, present and likely in the future. So it's probably not going away anytime soon. The Bento grid design continues to showcase bits of information in visually appealing ways in a mosaic type of grid structure that is being adopted by companies large and small, such as this example from Walmart, where they're using a Bento grid for their homepage. Or this slightly simpler example from Giving, which is using Bento UI alongside different colors, images, and a little bit of animation to make this section look really appealing. And with how easy it is to do this with CSS grids now, as well as no-code tools, it's definitely worth trying Bento UI for your next website. Number 11 is expressive topography or fonts, because these just make a website look unique and special. Expressive fonts aren't just using fonts outside of the classics like Roboto, but also in the way that the fonts are used, such as in this example, in the way that they're using full caps together with outlines to create what looks like a unique style for this design where it is almost like you're inside of a comic book. Adding some expression to fonts is also an example of this, like in this example here, where using a few emojis, animated sequences and strokes can all work to help make a font look more fresh, even if it's something that we're already used to. Other times having unique fonts that fit the style and theme of a product is great. Like this one from Ancient Drinks, which is using a Nordic like font. And what it does is make this website feel like you're taking a step back into history when you're viewing and reading some of the text that has that traditional type topography. Number 12 is color trends, because just like in fashion or clothing, color plays a big part in the psychology and how a website looks and feels. We're seeing a lot of new things emerge in terms of how websites now utilize color, as well as Pantone's new color of the year. For 2025, the color of the year is Mocha Moose. It's this brown-like color that looks earthy and wooden. It's worth checking out the Wix Studio Pantone collaboration, which really had some nice colors and assets that anyone can utilize if they're trying to build up a new website or theme, or even just test out their design skills. 
I'm also seeing a lot more bright and vibrant colors mixed with more neutral colors that encourage a user to view the most important element on the screen. And that usually is the most vibrant piece of color that you can see. Other times I see websites that aren't afraid of using a lot of colors to express themselves too. And this isn't limited to just websites. A lot of the app designs I'm seeing this year and on Dribbble also have a good splash of color that is definitely a creative choice that I don't mind seeing because it makes each app look unique, interesting, and fun. Number 13 is a brutalism or brutal design. And while it's not my personal favorite, it is one that seems to be adopted with this new generation of graphics designers. Brutalism is the type of design that doesn't make any excuses. It doesn't follow the rules, but it's also loud and unique in the sense that it can be overwhelmingly large in its text or button design. It sometimes reminds me of anti-design, and while I'm sure it works with the newer and younger generation of web designers, it doesn't really appeal to me as much as a person who's a bit older and I just feel a little bit overwhelmed when it's very loud and in my face. Number 14 is micro interactions. And while they personally might seem small and insignificant, they definitely play a part in how I feel when I get a new subscriber or if I add something to my cart and check it out. And great examples of micro interactions can be found all over the place, such as in a button like this, to this type of hover glow that you can get on UI components or buttons as well, or even a subtle animation when you are logging in or transitioning from one page to another. It can include these subtle animations whenever you click an app icon or a toast component that expands out from its original UI component back into its original state. I always enjoy seeing the creative ways that people create micro interactions to replace common components and their functionality. Number 15 is one of my favorites. It's white space or negative space because you don't want a website to look cluttered and overwhelming. Just like in this video, I try to keep it clean around my area while it's a little bit more busy around the sides. Good use of white space doesn't mean having empty space throughout your website. It just means that the space utilized helps the user focus in on the primary content, which is usually at the center of the screen. Good use of negative space also allows for other elements to be on the page, but a user will be drawn to the centered element. And while some examples of negative space just means padding out a lot of the content so it has room to breathe, it can also mean just having lots of white space in and around a page so that the main product or service gets to stand out more than any of the other content. 16 is grid design. Because of the fact that CSS makes grids so much easier now, we're seeing a lot more grids being added to web designs. And grid designs don't always have to be complicated, like this example here from Urban Outfitters, where grids are being used in different column and row arrangements to display a lot of information in a nice and organized manner. Grid design can sometimes look a little bit like Bento UI, and you can also nest grids inside of grids. Good use of them let you span different images across rows and columns like this example in this housing website, or help you organize the global sections of your website in a neat fashion that can also be responsive when you shrink down to the mobile viewport. The other implementation of grids I see often is in admin panels where it's a lot easier to organize different things on a dashboard where you can have UI grids now help you display the information in neat and organized ways. 17 is 3D. 3D elements, interactive 3D, 3D websites in general. 3D has grown a lot. Due to the bandwidth that we have now on the internet and things like spline design, we're seeing a lot more websites implement 3D in headers, into feature sections, and even as entire websites as a whole. Here's a pretty simple yet elegant design from Atmos, which incorporates a little bit of 3D as you scroll through the page, and it doesn't use too many elements or colors, just enough to keep you engaged while reading the text. Sometimes good use of 3D just means using a small 3D floating element on the page. Another example could be having a 3D object or asset as part of a shopping experience, so that the e-commerce product you're trying to sell to people has a more appealing look and feel, especially when you're trying to customize it. I definitely like this one here for this motorbike brand from Savak, which did a really good job at this. And one of my favorite executions of this was from Why Ryan Hates Mondays. I originally thought this was a 2D website until their perspective tilted and this 3D character came alive, which I could control. It had this experimental type of navigation where rather than clicking onto different pages, I just simply ran to them and they opened up into these 3D assets that interacted with me. I can only imagine what the websites of this year might look like once people better understand how to use things like spline design to create interesting experiences just like this. 
Number 18 is blending images with graphics elements. Whether it's a color and a picture, or even maybe an illustration with some strokes or text, there are some really interesting and unique ways that you can combine these things to make a website look quite special. Such as this creative Japanese example over here, where this character turns into a samurai with some text in the background as we scroll down. Good execution of this design trend sometimes means simply adding text into the background of an image that feels authentic and like it's meant to be there because it's cut out with the building in the foreground. Alternatively, you can have silhouettes where the text is in the background or even clipping through the image to present it in dynamic ways. Number 19 is dark mode and light mode because websites now build in both. Tailwind CSS makes this very easy and often a website will automatically adhere to the device specifications of whether you're running a dark or a light theme. Web design should look good both in dark and light versions, and with good color harmony and contrast, this shouldn't be such a difficult task. Here's a few examples of websites that have both a dark and light mode and still work great in both. I particularly liked this design from Dorwak, which is one that takes you through this hotel, and the light and dark mode is done in such a way as to create a completely different website once you switch. So here, it looks like a regular hotel with staff and management, but once night hits and we have the darker version, we now have a completely different scene, with things like zombies in the background and haunted rooms, which you definitely don't want to enter. Light and dark mode shouldn't be about just high contrast, but also adapting the colors you already have in your design and repurposing them so that they can work at nighttime when people actually shouldn't be staring at things that are too bright. Number 20 is text or text only design. And it's when you don't reinvent the wheel or overdo your design. You simply state what your website is about and that's enough. This portfolio from Sam is a great example where he's incentivizing people to scroll over the text in order to learn a little bit more about the projects he's done and the awards he's received. Or this example from Vishnu, who's created a portfolio where a lot of white space is used and very subtle animation here at the very bottom. And all of this incentivizes you to actually read the content rather than just browse some pictures or imagery. Text only design doesn't mean taking away imagery or animation. It just means that the text is the most prominent thing on the website, therefore worth reading. If you guys enjoyed this video and you wanna learn a little bit more about design or creating your own websites, join my community. On there, I've got a number of courses to help you learn how to do design or build websites with no code and AI, and these are entirely free. You'll get to learn how to use the latest platforms to create things like sitemaps, build on top of Wix Studio, and much more. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.